like this been on my heart um and i've done a video about it before but i just feel the need to do another one and maybe i'm just i'm just moved to do it and i don't know if it's a necessity or anything but I don't even know how to start because what I don't want to do is come across as if I'm judging people who may just be in on hard times. You know, I understand hard times truly, truly, truly do come. I'm 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 an example of that, and I'm pretty sure anybody who's gonna come across this video, they've experienced hard times. That's not where I'm gonna be coming from. But what I am gonna be coming from is I did a video a while ago about how our first responsibility, our first priorities, if we are husbands or wives, is our families and, and the divine role that we play. For husbands, it's as provider, it's as um, priest of the home. For wives is as their support, it's as their aid, um, and of course encouragement. And if you have children, mom, homekeeper. The issue first, let me state the issue at hand that's on my heart. The issue that I have seen in Israel <clears throat> is this that. That there will be men who are married, but they are not providing for their household. Instead, they are they believe that they are doing the work for the most high using maybe gifts or talents that they have. Now, this would not be bad if the family does not lack because of it. If, 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 praise the most high, if the gift is truly making room for you and you are able to literally sustain your family based off of whatever gift or talent that you have, that is able to put food in your house every time you need it, that you are able to pay all of your expenses and your needs are your necessities of food, shelter, and raiment for your family is being met. That is a blessing, and this is not what I, then I'm not talking about you. But those who, that's not happening. It's not providing for your family. Like, it may bring in a little something every now and then, but it's not providing for your family. Then, I don't want to sound rude or harsh. But, but but that's not appropriate for any man, and especially not a man of the faith. Not a man of the faith. It's, it's not right. Um, some people may be like, okay, well, me and my wife, we have an understanding. Okay? That means... It seems that the understanding is breaking the law. And mind you, I am not talking about if hard times come and or it, it's a problem or problematic for the man to find work. This is not what I'm talking about. I am literally talking about if for whatever reason someone has said, you know, I'm going to, by someone I mean a man, of course, but a man has said that I'm going to devote all of my time to the most high. And they no longer work anymore. That is inappropriate. Who's that's inappropriate? It's not being obedient to the mantle on that has been set up on men. I mean, literally, the only people who that was allowed for were the priests. That's it. And even still, their needs were met. Because of the people. 
And that was a mandate by the Most High. While I know that the men are called to be priests of their home, y'all are still not the Levites. No offense. And I hope that I'm not saying this wrong. And please, somebody correct me. Please, someone give me more clarity. But from what I know, the word says that a man is supposed to provide for his own family. First, he's supposed to be the first provider for his family. And that if he doesn't do that, like, okay, if he doesn't, let me finish that thought. If he does not do that, he's worse than an infidel, which means he is worse than an unbeliever. Now, again, to go back to those who have decided, you know, I'm not going to work because I'm going to dedicate my entire life to the ministry of the Most High and for the people. You're not helping the people by not providing for your family. In fact, it makes the faith look bad. Makes the faith look bad. So I hope that I have, it's like, I don't want to offend anybody. And I certainly don't want to make it seem like I am talking about people. Because that's not where I am coming from in any way, shape, or form. But I think that men need to be held accountable for not taking on their first responsibility as a man and as a married man at that in providing for your family. If you are not working, but you say that you're working for the most high, I don't know where that comes from. Even the disciples had jobs. They, they, were, they were skilled in something and this is what got them their money. Even Paul worked with his hands. He was a tent maker. And just so, you know, no one could say that he didn't do anything for himself. Paul, I can't remember the scripture, but I will post it if I can later. But Paul clearly states that he went to work making tents with some of the people who sometimes he would go when he was doing, you know, building up the church, whenever he would go to certain areas, he would make sure that he could find work in tent making. And Paul and all the other disciples were totally putting in work for the kingdom, but they still had to work. They still had to work. Again, this is not about hard times. This is not about when you and your wife have to sit down because maybe you've become injured or because maybe you guys have moved into an area where it is harder for you as a male to find work than it is for your wife. Those instances are different. And when you talk to her, okay, and she assists you, that is wonderful. That is fine. That is a blessing. And that's what's supposed to happen. But if you decided for whatever reason, and I'm going to go out on a limb for some people and say that it was to please your own desire for whatever reason, um, the lust of your flesh, that you're not providing for your family. You're not being the one to generate funds and income for your household to make sure that they eat, to make sure that rent is paid, to make sure that they have clothing or whatever it is they need. Then that's just, that's not right. And no matter if you try to attach the Most High's name to that, it's not appropriate because you're already breaking a few commandments of his. In the garden, he told men that they were going to have to work. By the sweat of their brow. That was going, that was what was going to have to happen. And it was going to be laborious work, but they were going to have to work for what they got. Further on, it came more into scripture that that was repeated. A man who doesn't work does not eat. Then even again, it was repeated specifically for families. A man who does not provide for his family is worse than an unbeliever. And there are so many so-called believers that are in the department of men and, and some of the ladies. For whatever reason, you have agreed to this. 
and that is out of order. If it is not a dire health issue, again, or if it's not some circumstance that you guys have absolutely no control over, it is inappropriate and it is literally out of the Most High's will that your husband not be working and providing for you and your family. Scripture also teaches that a woman who has to provide for the household is going to be bitter. She's going to be angry. She's going to have a problem at some point in time with her husband because she's the one who this responsibility, who it is not for, but it is falling upon. So I just want to encourage anybody. to I mean, the men specifically, this is who I'm talking to, the men specifically. If you know deep down in your heart that the reason that you have said that you're not going to work is inappropriate. I beg you to repent and to change and to ask the most how to help you find work and get to working and providing for your family because you are not operating in your role. As a man, which is going against the most high already. And for a man in the faith, that's just, that's not, you're not in the faith if you're not providing for your family. I don't know if I should have said that because that may not necessarily be the truth. However, if, but the scripture clearly states that you're worse than an infidel. An infidel is somebody who's not in the faith because they don't believe. So if you're worse than somebody who's not in the faith because they choose not to believe, then I guess maybe it was okay for me to say that. All right. So I just, I just, I just want to encourage, please do not continue operating like this because it is out of order. And if you're having any issues as a result of it, if any misfortune have come up on you because you are not working, it is actually not right if you are able-bodied and if you there are no restrictions other than the ones that you put on yourself for you not to be working, then you are wrong. And if misfortune is coming up on you where your family is now struggling and now people are reaching out to the church, I guess, or other people to assist when... It's just because you didn't get a job or because you didn't work. That's not right. That is not right. And the most high is going to judge you. I don't know everybody's situation, so I can't, I'm not speaking as if I do. But I'm actually just speaking on if, if this be the case that you are able-bodied and that only you have set up in your heart that you're not going to work because you feel like you're going to dedicate your whole life to the ministry of the most high. That is not right. Your ministry is providing for your family. That's your ministry. And if you have an extra talent or an extra gift that you want to use and to glorify the most high, that's great. That would be in order. But to stop doing the first ministry that you're supposed to do, which is providing for your family, to, to operate in your gift and it's not making ends meet for your family, that is wrong. And you're worse than an unbeliever. So that's all I have to say. Um, I really hope that this gets through to somebody and that if you know, if you're making excuses as a man that you ask the most high to forgive you and that you repent of that and ask the most high to help you find work and then get to work for your family. Blessings come when we operate in obedience. Point blank, period. So that's all I got. I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom on that note. All right. Bye-bye.